Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we got some big storms just brewing up for today for the lower 48. We even have an enhanced section for the winds and large hail. It's going to be another strong night, just like we had last night, just like we had the night before. I do have details for you. Plus, what's going on in our tropics? We still have some invest growing in the eastern Pacific, still not showing no big threat yet towards Hawaii is still down the road but this is growing over here for this tropical wave and you can see how it widened out for chances for this to go into the eastern Gulf of Mexico then potentially get pulled back out matter of fact I'm showing that as we go literally in four days this wave is going to be right here and it's either going to take the northern side as a surface low or it's going to take the southern side. This all depends on whether it goes into the Gulf or not. Now you can see it for this morning. It has a little bit of convection to it. Way better than it did yesterday. But there's still no rotation. There's no invest. There's no. It's just a group of disorganized thunderstorms right now passing through and you can see literally is not doing much at all so it's going to take a couple to a few days to travel to the west and once it does then we're going to know what this system is doing plus as we go towards the middle of august i'm showing we still have another system coming and showing that potentially this could start forming up in this direction right by the western mbr and potentially go all the way to the east coast or go around a high pressure into the atlantic I'm going to show you that information as well. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along with my weather forecasting. I always put timestamps in the description below. That way it saves you time. You can go throughout the video very quickly. But more importantly, make sure you click that bell and select all. Otherwise, you will not get the updates. I do afternoon updates. Sometimes it all depends what's going on with severe weather and the tropics. For today, I definitely will have an afternoon update. Thank you so much for your time. Make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that share button so other families as nice as you and yours can find this information and prepare for these storms. And not just what's going on in the tropics, it's still a few days away. What's going on in severe weather is really getting strong for today. Now, before we get into the forecast, I need to alert you to these temperatures because they're just still going to be hot for the rest of the week. We are in a summer heat wave right now. For today, your highs will get all the way up towards 105 towards Kansas, Oklahoma, the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas, eastern New Mexico and western Texas. A couple people still getting over 90-something degrees and getting into 100 for a lot of people as well. 90s going all the way up towards Minnesota. The southwest has been cooking the whole summer. Now with your heat indices, this is going to feel a lot worse for a lot more states. Covering multiple states now, feeling like you're over 100 to over 105 degree heat indices, even getting over towards 110. Now for tomorrow, this is going to grow again. You're going to be in the same locations for the South Central, for the Southwest. But with the heat indices, with the dew points, it is just going to raise up the heat value and make you feel like you're in over 100 and 105 degree temperatures. Please get ready for this heat. It will go lower and lower as we go towards the weekend. Friday will be lower as well, but it will be there again. Now you see the latest information with National Hurricane Center, just like I showed you, and it is at 60%, showing that it is a broad area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms right now, but it is forecasted to be better environmental conditions as it goes more west, northwest, towards the Bahamas and become a potential tropical depression and strengthen up. And whether it goes on this direction or whether it goes around to this direction depends on what side the surface low is going to take. Because we still don't have a surface low yet. That's why there's still so many questions. But I am seeing more of that little western curve and then going across. You see how they have widened that out some since yesterday. Now showing by the Euro literally in three days has a chance to start strengthening up as it passes by Hispaniola going towards the Bahamas and making that curve. Now remember, if it does not make that curve, if it stays a little bit weaker, it will go a little bit further to the west before it eventually gets pulled out. It all depends if that trough, if that cold front is stronger or is this high pressure? Is this high pressure stronger? If the high pressure is stronger, it's going to push it to the west. If the cold front is stronger, it's going to pull it east and north a little bit sooner. Still showing the latest information on the euro that it will still curve around. So here we are literally in 81 hours, almost four days, a tropical wave moving more to the west. And this is your pressure system. So it's showing a little bit more 
of low pressure convection building in this system. And you can see where it can either go on the northern side or the southern side. When you go by GFS, GFS is taking the southern side. Euro is taking the northern side and it goes away with the northern side. It leaves this elongation that it has and it takes the northern track. If you look at the 500 millibar vortex, you can see at that moment, is taking the northern side to get a surface low, not the southern side, but it is there. GFS is taking that southern side. And it's not just GFS, there's other models as well. We have the Icon is showing it right into the middle, and we have the Canadian model shows it around that direction also. Now I'm gonna show you what they're doing. There's other models as well. We also got the JMA shows it around here. I will go through this, and we have the Ghost Satellite shows it going right to the west as well. But according to the Euro, the trough is stronger, not the high pressure, and it gets pulled to the north. Remember, a strengthening storm will get pulled by that trough, and it goes out. Now, when you go by the GFS, it's taking that southern track. But what it's still showing is what it showed a long time ago, is it could take that westward push, the trough goes over it and blocks it at that point, still showing something very weak, but then it starts strengthening up as it goes towards the coast. Still not the point. You still got this big high pressure right here, blocking it, potentially pushing it a little bit further west. So if it misses this northern turn, we could be looking at this scenario. And GFS is showing that with that block, it just intensifies right there on the Gulf Coast. Not good. Showing pressure system will finally grow into Western Caribbean on the southern side. Then it'll get steered to the north, get blocked as it becomes a potential strong tropical storm or a hurricane running the Gulf. Then it just grows into a major hurricane right there on that stall. That is not good news. It's been showing this all over the place. I know we take this with a grain of salt when it comes to GFS, but we're talking about Tuesday. Monday and a Tuesday, if this showed true, Monday and a Tuesday sitting there, winds, rainfall, everything winded around all the way until Thursday. Maybe longer if that showed true. We need to keep our eyes on this. Don't just believe the year all the way, even though it's been very accurate, it's been doing very good. There's other models showing a little bit of that westward turn and GFS is really going gangbusters with it, but that's because these other models are seeing that it will be on that southern side, but shows that at high pressure will be stronger, but then weaken back, and it will get pulled up by that trough still. That's what they're showing, but still it's not very far away from what the GFS is seeing, so we gotta keep that in mind as well. Now when you look at the Icon, it's only a five day model, it's picking up what the GFS is saying, a little bit more to the west, but then look how quickly it gets pulled back across Florida. The Euro Ensemble Control Member shows both of them, literally past four days. Shows that it could either be the north or the southern side. And in this run, it takes the northern. You see how it does that? See how it shows both of them? See how it gets elongated? It could be both directions. Takes the northern side. That is a very close second right there. Canadian also, it sees that southern side like GFS, but like with the icon, it shows that it will eventually get pulled around. JMA, it also agrees that it will be on the inside of the Gulf of Mexico, but not showing a strong system, showing that that block will not be there, and it'll just be something weak going by, like a group of disorganized thunderstorms, like the Euro is picking up, maybe a tropical depression. See how there's no pressure to it, it just weakens down, and that block don't go just like the GFS. But we do have new information out on Global Tropics, what we can expect. Showing from August 7th all the way to the 13th, so it's showing later. Remember, it was the 3rd, it was the 4th, the 5th, now they're going all the way to the 7th. Now this is going to eventually move over and get tropical cyclone probability formation in this region. You see it's got a little bit of that eastern Gulf of Mexico and something coming off the coast of Africa with even more confidence building that this could form. This is the one that could potentially shoot either towards the east coast of the lower 48 or go right around and be a fish storm. Maybe we got to watch out for Bermuda. And you can see in the eastern Pacific, Tropical cyclone probability formation, but you also see above average rainfall coming out of that.
And as we go from the 14th to the 20th of August, the middle of August, and a little bit beyond, you can see more confidence in that curve of a tropical cyclone formation coming. This could easily curve around, but it could get carried by a Bermuda high and go further to the west. And it's too far for accuracy, but when you go to look at the Canadian control member, it goes further. You can see potentially that wave could get steered to the west by a high pressure, and it could be a system right off the coast sometime around the 17th, probably be a little further. Usually when these are longer range, you can give it another week. It might be into the high 17s into the 20s. It is expected for that to form right off the MDR and start curving. It could go in this direction, but we do have this possibility also. The strength would be different, but we do see a path. And just like I showed you the other day, the Old Farmers Almanac, that is exactly when they see a hurricane threat to the northern side of Florida as you go into the 20s. And it sees a threat along the southeast corridor, along the Carolinas and Virginia, a hurricane threat on the east coast as you go into the later 20s. So a week later, because it's be a longer range. This is crazy accurate. When we look at our potential velocity anomaly, we are seeing that around the 12th and beyond showing more strength to it, according to the GFS. The Euro sees it as well, still showing it be sometimes in the high teens. This is right when the Canadian is bringing this system potentially in. Then you see potentially some more unfavorable environment, some sinking air after that. And then as we go into September, it's just going to explode in strength. Now let's talk about the severe weather aspect for today because it is ramped up, everyone. Now you can see yesterday, thank you so much to everyone that hit the like button, shared the information because the severe weather got bad again. I even posted about the power outages that happened yesterday. We did have a, a tornado report in Nebraska, but we had over 220 wind damage reports right in that region. A lot of power outages went out. Multiple states still have about 10,000 without power. It all depends. It's not covering the whole state. We're going to have the same thing happen again today. This is going to be three days in a row. So for today, you see the enhanced section that is not for tornadoes. Your tornado chance is actually on a low, a 2%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for today. What you have to think about is all these winds. This is getting very strong for today. That's why you got the enhanced section. We have the 30% and we also have the significant severe and all this black 74 miles per hour winds or greater. This is wind gusts. So here's your cities and states at risk for the chance for the damage and winds for today. Also the hail threat in the same regions, even chances for large hail in that black for today. Here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. National Weather Service has scattered thunderstorms with severe wind gusts are expected today into tonight from the central and northern plains and southeastward into the Ohio Valley. Isolated large to very large hail will be possible from parts of the mid-Missouri Valley northward into the Dakotas and Minnesota this evening. And once again, strong storms coming by for today. You can see starting for this morning, you get them brewing up over here for Illinois, eastern Iowa. You also get them for the north central, and these kind of move together. See how it goes all across Indiana. We get that Bowen feature again. That's not going to be good as that goes all the way to the late night, early in the morning, showing a lot of strong winds aloft. That's going to be coming with that as well. But showing the winds are a lot stronger on the north central as you go later into the afternoon. Then it starts getting a little MCS right there. See how it rotates around? And it'd be stronger for tomorrow also in the same region. And that rotating around of the MCS, that mesoscale convective system, a group of rotating thunderstorms, that is what could be bringing your chance for a tornado threat as you go into tomorrow also. Why these storms move by the Carolinas and moves offshore? Showing our latest information that as we go through later tonight, remember this is central time. Look how you get a Bowen line feature from Illinois to Indiana as you go through later tonight, as that goes from the Dakotas, Nebraska, into Minnesota, into Iowa. Then it goes across Kentucky and it weakens down after that, but it still has some storms brewing and these storms are bringing some very high winds with them as well. But this right here brewing all night long is bringing more winds over Iowa. Iowa has been having a few rough days. Then as we go overnight for tomorrow morning is going to grow right again as we get that MCS bringing chances for tornadoes to come with that. So you need to watch out for that for tomorrow as well. That part could ramp up a little bit because right where you have your surface low right to the south 
is right where you're going to get the most vorticity, and that's where your tornado chances could ramp up a little bit more for tomorrow. But showing those cells for today, we'll start getting some strong winds aloft over here for Illinois, also for the Dakotas going into Minnesota. And you can see how that plays out all the way to 8, 9 o'clock, strong all the way to Kentucky. But look at these winds growing for Iowa again. Iowa, once again, is going to get these very strong winds all night long. Early morning hours, northern Missouri going into Illinois, showing both simultaneously from the Dakotas going towards Minnesota, Nebraska going towards Iowa, and Illinois going towards Indiana and Kentucky, bringing strong winds with those. You can see those strong winds aloft are a lot worse on the ground over here for the storms in the north. Showing all morning long, and then for tomorrow, maybe some more adding up for the south central, the southwest, and in Tennessee and Kentucky going towards the southeast and the Carolinas. These are some very strong winds right here. Showing once you get into the afternoon, it's going to spark up with the daytime heating and really kick off these storms. Bring a lot of winds. 50 in the orange, 60 in the red, 70 in the brown, and you even get some 80 in there with with the white right there. That's right around Minnesota, also around western Iowa. It's showing up to 105, but you definitely cannot rule out 70 or 80. And as you go through for tomorrow night, this is where it grows some winds for the southwest and some more for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Look, it goes all the way towards Indiana and Ohio for today with those storms. Bring in winds with this. Each one of these is a growing band of thunderstorms pushing out. Not to mention what you have over here. It's just a lot of storms growing. A lot of storms for tonight. And bringing the hail threat with it. So you can see it is bringing some hail across Illinois, Indiana. But the hail is going to be bigger for eastern and northern South Dakota, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa. Showing around 10 o'clock and on. That's when you're going to start getting that hail with those storms as well. Hail, chances for tornadoes, but hail and damage of winds, very high winds. So for tomorrow, there is a tornado threat as that group of thunderstorms at MCS rolls over. There is a 2%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for Thursday. You also have the wind threat and the hail threat. The hail threat isn't as strong like I showed you, but the wind threat could be as well. So here's your cities and states at risk for the possible damage of winds for tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Thank you so much for help spreading this information so people knows what's going on. You see how strong these impacts could be for tonight, and they're looking very powerful. I will keep you updated. There will be an afternoon update, probably some severe weather being in that as well from what I can see. Definitely going to be a tropical update. Now, before I go today, I want to read to you John 14, 1 through 7. This is Jesus speaking. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Please get ready for these storms. They're pretty serious storms. Make sure you got things picked up out your yard. They could be possible projectiles towards other people and other homes. So just make sure you take care of that. Check on your neighbors. Check on your pets. And remember, all glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe. I'll see you this afternoon for the update.